we'll go ahead and thank you for joining us and thank you for the, anybody tuning in and uh, we have a number of people outside we appreciate them uh, being here as well so we'll go ahead and get started connie could you please call the roll adamson here 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 Lurk. Here. Here. Stevens. Stevens. You're here today. Sorry, here. <laughs> <laughs> here. Thank you. If you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, after which we'll remain standing for an invocation, which will be observed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. We will we'll move to agenda item three is a consent agenda. The following business items may be approved by one motion. If any one member of the council so desires any matter, it can be moved to a separate agenda item. <laughs> A minutes. Council may wish to waive the oral reading of the minutes and approve the minutes of the clarification of regular council meeting of October 15, 2020. B, uh, the treasurer's report has been pulled. We will hear that report on December 3. C, the preservation committee appointment. Council may wish to confirm uh, the mayor's appointment of Elizabeth. To say that a member of the Historic Preservation Commission file filling a vacancy. This one's term will begin November 20, 2020, and will expire November 20, 2023. D, Human Relations Advisory Committee, uh, to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Ahmed Saf Clark to continue his service as a member of the Human Relations Advisory Committee. Mr. Sandbar's term will begin November 19, 2020, and will expire November 19, 2024. The Idaho Transportation Department Child Safety Seat Grant Police. Council may wish to approve an application to the Idaho Transportation Department in the amount of $15,563 for the purpose of purchasing and distributing child passenger safety seats for police staff and certification training and education for police staff. And if the grant is approved, authorize the mayor to accept and sign documents related to the grant. This is an annual grant and local match in the amount of $1,100 is required, which will be covered through the donations to the Safety C program. And F, council decision, the triangle subdivision flat note exclusion. Council may wish to adopt this decision to exclude three notes from the triangle subdivision flat recorded September 28, 2018. September 28, 2018. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I would move for approval of the consent agenda items A and C through F. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Stevens. Connie, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Addison? Yes. Ray? Yes. Ray? Yes. Larry? Yes. 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 
Thank you, agenda item four, communication and proclamation. Mr. Mr. Yes. Mayor, do you yes. think that we could possibly ask everybody who's on to mute unless they're speaking? Because that way we don't have all that background noise going on. Toilets flushing and dogs barking and everything else. Absolutely, yeah. If you're not speaking, go ahead and mute, please. Thank you. Uh, let's see, communication and proclamation, agenda item four. Uh, we do not have any, so agenda item five is a calendar review. On December 3 at 5.30 p.m. will be a clarification meeting. December 3 at 6 p.m. will be a regular council meeting. At the, on December 10 at 9 a.m. will be a work session. Other events, annual leaf collection continues through November 30. Leaves must be placed in compostable bags, not boxes or plastic bags. Leaves will be picked up on a regular collection days. City, City Creek Recreation Area gates are closed to motorized access until approximately, approximately May 15, 2021. November 26 and 7, city offices will be closed to observe the Thanksgiving holiday. Garbage and recycling pickup for Thursday and Friday will be one day be, uh, behind. The Community Recreation Center will be closed on, on Thanksgiving, but will open from 9 to 5, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Friday, November 27th. November 27th, Christmas light, night lights drive through event in Old Town from 6 to 8 p.m. As a reminder, face coverings are required when entering the city of Pocatello building or facilities or while riding uh, public transit public transportation buses. We will move to agenda item number six, uh, appointment confirmation of Chief Financial Officer, City Treasurer Kruger. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's appointment of James Kruger as City Financial Officer, City Treasurer, effective January 18, 2021. Councilman Bray. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay. Mayor, I move that we appoint uh, uh, Mr. Kruger as our chief financial officer. Confirm our appointment. Second. Mr. So Mayor. Ms. Mr. Yes. Mayor, could, yes. could, we just, could, could people in the know just uh, give us a, a few pointers, partly for the benefit of the public, of Mr. Kruger's uh, background and so forth? Why don't Mr. we online with us? Why don't we have uh, Mr. Kruger uh, get on and he can give us that background real quick. He's on online here. That would be Jim, fabulous for the public. Jim, can you hear us? I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? We can hear you fine, but we can't see you. It might be beneficial if you turn your camera on that the council can see who is talking. <clears throat> There you go. You see me now. Yeah. All right. So this is Jim, and Jim, the question was: Is uh, can you give us a little bit of the, uh, your background? And uh, you know, I focus a little bit on municipal government and municipal finance. Sure, be glad to do that. Um, sounds a little bit like I have a frog in my throat. I apologize for that. <laughs> I'll try to. Uh, clear it out a little bit. So just real briefly, um, I wasn't necessarily planning <clears throat> on having this opportunity to give you this background, but I'll be glad to just give you a real brief sketch. Um, so as you can see, I'm, I'm in my office here down in Coronado. Um, I've worked for the city of Coronado for the last five years as their administrative services director slash treasurer. Uh, before that, I, I was with the uh, city of Garden City, Idaho for about seven and a half years. Um, I've had many years experience in municipal finance. Um, when I was with the city of Garden City, I was also the city clerk. Um, and so I've had lots of years of experience related to managing the finances of uh, 
municipalities, including those that are about the same size as, as what Pocatello is, uh, some that are a little bit smaller than Pocatello as well. But uh, sure glad that uh, you're having uh, this item on the agenda tonight, and I look forward to, to hearing what you uh, end up deciding to do. Be glad to answer any questions that you might have as Fantastic. well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, any questions for, for Jim real quick? I think we're in good shape. Thank you, Jim. We'll go ahead and vote and we'll see if we can get you to Idaho. Back, back to great. heaven outside of that sunshine. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we have a motion by Councilmember Bray and a second by Keatum. Connie, could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Gina? Yes. Atkinson? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Fantastic. Jim, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Congratulations. We look forward to the day we can get you here and uh, working like crazy. Be safe, sounds, be safe. sounds great. I like to be crazy. Yes. <laughs> Bye Thank for you. now. Have a great evening. Uh, uh, we'll move to agenda item seven as a public hearing uh, rezoned by contract to 1399 Bench Road. This time has been set aside for council to hear comments from the public regarding a request by Lockwood Development Partners LLC, represented by TJ Budge and of Racine Olson for a zoning map amendment by contract for the property at 1399 Bench Road from the existing commercial general CG zoning to residential commercial professional RCP zoning to allow for multiple multi-family dwelling units. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the application after a public hearing on October 14, 2020. Uh, Council, before we get going, I just need to ask, has there been any ex parte communication? I'm seeing a whole bunch of nodded heads and nodding no, so we'll go ahead and, uh, TJ, we'll turn the time over to you. I want to remind you, you've got a total of 10 minutes for this uh, part of the presentation, and then we'll call you back up if there's uh, any questions or anything that, that needs to be answered. So, TJ, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. It's good to be with you tonight. Uh, I appreciate the technology that the city's utilized to enable us to participate by video. Even though we can't be there in person, it's nice to be able to see the uh, members of the council. And and so I appreciate the effort the city's gone uh, to make that possible. I've got with me today Dan McNulty, one of the principals of Lockwood Development Partners. And we're going to split up our presentation. So I'm going to take the first five minutes. I'm going to talk a little bit about the project. TJ, TJ yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I need to open the public hearing. <laughs> oh, I, ju I jumped the gun. I, I jumped the ju I jumped the gun. Uh, I declare the public hearing open. Okay, now you're good. <laughs> well, I appreciate you giving me a few extra minutes, Mayor. That's very generous. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about um, a little bit about the project, but more about the city code and what a contract zone agreement is and why we think it's appropriate and why it was recommended for approval. And then I'm going to turn the time over to Dan. He's going to take the second five minutes and he's going to talk more about what, what Lockwood Development Partners does and put a little more color on how they intend utilizing, uh, attend to utilize the property um and so we'll split it up that way i've been told that i'll have an opportunity to share my screen so that uh the rest of you can see my powerpoint presentation on your computers let's see if i can uh i'm gonna try that that function is not working is there an it person there that has to authorize me to share my oh here we go no, yeah uh, can you get it now tj yeah sorry about the, the delay it's it's in it's in progress here okay oh there we go there we go 
are you able to see my screen? It begins with the slide application for contract zone agreement. We are. Um, yes, this, we, we are. Thank you. This application pertains to the Clarion Inn property. I've got a photo of it here. Everybody, I'm sure, is familiar with this property. This is uh, one of the older hotels uh, in Pocatello, but a well known hotel. And um, Dan will talk more about this, but um, the hotel industry has really been challenged by COVID and some of these older hotels especially have struggled. There are a number of hotels um, that as they age out and they get replaced by newer hotels like the Marriott's and the Hamptons, um, they end up vacant and blighted. And um, this is a hotel that, that potentially could end up in that position Lockwood Development Partners has come in with a kind of a unique way to repurpose this hotel and revitalize it. And the proposal is a mixed use development. I have on the screen an engineering drawing that shows a, an aerial view of the hotel. And the, the plan is to use this for three uh, different but related purposes. So the part of the hotel that's dedicated to hotel rooms currently, that would be remodeled into um, studio and one bedroom apartments and that would uh, become uh, age restricted housing for folks 55 and up. The target market is veterans. This facility is really being targeted to uh, veterans and those um, that are 55 and up. So that portion of the property would uh, essentially become uh, like an apartment complex. If you look in the middle of the hotel, this is the area where the swimming pool is currently located. That would be converted into an adult daycare. This is for people who um, are able to be cared for by family members and loved ones at home, and they're not uh, they have not reached the point where they need to be in a nursing home, but they've got family that are that are caring for them. And those family members sometimes need a place to take their parents while they take care of other responsibilities and and this adult daycare would serve that purpose. The third part of the hotel, which is currently where the banquet rooms are in the restaurant, that would be converted into a veteran education center. This part of the property would really be utilized more by younger veterans, those who have left the service more recently and are transitioning back into the workforce and they would provide workforce training and things of that nature. The reason that we're applying for a contract zone agreement is because of the mixed use nature of the property. A contract zone agreement is, is different than a traditional rezone. Under a traditional rezone, you rezone the property permanently and any authorized use uh, within that new zone could, uh, could occur on the property. With a contract, zone agreement, that's really a conditional rezone and we're rezoning it for one specific purpose. And when that uh, specific purpose comes to an end, then the property reverts back to the original zone. And so what we're asking the city to approve is a rezone of this property for the specific purpose that I've discussed, uh, the multi-use of the Clarion, Clarion Inn. The next slide I have is an excerpt of the city's zoning map uh, with the property outlined in red. The property is currently in the commercial general zone. The reason that zone doesn't work is that uh, the commercial general zone only allows living quarters in upstairs stories. So they do, do not allow apartments on the ground level. And with this project, there would be uh, some apartments on ground level. The contract zone agreement would rezone it to the um, CGA zone. Um, and I gotta remember what, what that zone is. That is the, or excuse me, the RCP zone. And you'll see a number of RCP zones nearby. Um, Grace Lutheran School is an RCP zone and um, this is more of a mixed use zone. Um, in the code, I've put up an excerpt from the city code that describes the RCP zone. It's for a mix of residential, professional office and neighborhood commercial uses and I've underlined in close proximity to residential areas and major transportation facilities. This is really a better fit for the project that we have going. Within the city code, there are a number of comprehensive plan goals that this project will advance. One of them is a variety of high quality housing that's safe, sanitary, attractive, and affordable. 
that's especially important for our elderly population, which is growing, and for veterans. Uh, we also have a policy of adoption. I'm sorry, you cut out for just a second. Could you just repeat that last couple sentences? Yeah, sorry about that. And I apologize for speaking fast. This is what happens when I, when I'm, uh, I prepare more material than I've got time for. But uh, the point I was making is that this project advances several goals of the comprehensive plan. One of them is for uh, development of a variety of housing opportunities that are safe, attractive, and affordable. This is especially important for our elderly population, which is growing, and for veterans. Um, and there's also housing goal two, which is advanced by this project. There's a number of other policies that I've outlined here. It's, it's a goal of our comprehensive plan to encourage mixed use development uh, that provides for a more livable and walkable community. This project is close to a number of restaurants, uh, churches, and transportation infrastructure, which will which will um, provide value to the residents there. Um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna turn the remainder of the time over to Dan McNulty, and he's gonna talk more specifically about uh, the programs they'll offer in the property. And then as the mayor mentioned, uh, when our time's up, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Dan, you've got a minute and a half, it looks like. You're muted. How's that, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can now. Okay, good evening, guys um, and girls. Um, Thank you. A minute and a half. Will uh, uh, am I able to share my screen as well? Uh, I think if I put this up, will you be able to see it? Uh, I don't know if we can. Okay, now you can. Okay, let's try it. Got something here. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Share. Okay, let's see if we can enlarge that a little bit. Yeah, Okay, let me let me go to uh, my Chrome browser. How's that? Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You got, you got 20 seconds, so I'm going to give you another minute because I don't All think right. you can say anything. Yeah, we'll we'll send this uh, package to you, but it's about 37 slides. Uh, what I want to underscore, and, and actually TJ did a great job of what we're doing, but you know what we're doing is saving this property from becoming uh, blighted and, and uh, off the tax rolls. It'll be back on the tax rolls. We'll provide jobs for the community, and uh, truly, as uh, uh, Veteran Services USA. We have a mission base here to help these folks out that are in the 55, in this case, in this property, 55 plus, uh, providing good shelter. And uh, again, through the adult daycare and our vocational training, uh, this is, uh, again, a mission-based uh, organization that uh, I think you're gonna find uh, it's gonna be great for the community. Um, I'll slip through these slides real quick. We've got a great uh, experience development team uh, our offerings, as you can see, are uh, uh, we've got affordable housing, home and community-based services, vocational job training, and job placement. Uh, we're doing this throughout the country on a number of hospitals and hotels. Because of the, the pandemic and the distressed uh, hotel hospitality market, there's a lot of, uh, as you know, the ADRs and REVPARs are down 50%, sometimes 60%, 70%. These are going out of business, either either in default or in foreclosure. We have a business plan and a mission that uh, saves us for the community, brings jobs back to the, back to the community, and also uh, uh, puts it back on the tax rolls. Uh, I think I went over 20 seconds, but uh, we'll send this to you so you can go through our package uh, of what we, we do. Uh, these are some of our facilities. Uh, that's Pawtucket, Rhode Island. That's a 400,000 square foot Hospital, we've got the same, uh, some of the programs that we're talking about here, adult daycare, education, Newcastle, Pennsylvania, uh, also in Trenton, New Jersey. We've got a Wyndham Garden, uh, which is a full service hotel. That we've uh, also converted into adult daycare, education, long-term care. Uh, Bristol, Connecticut, that's also a healthcare building. It has uh, 
uh, some of the sa same attributes and same offerings. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I am, I'm in Chicago. We have uh, Blue Island, Illinois. That's a 12 acre site, 400,000 square feet and uh, a full complement of offerings there. Uh, Dan, thank you very much. I gave you two minutes now, so. Okay, and the rest. If there's any questions, please stay on the line. And so if we have any questions, we can we can go from there. Okay, thank you, I appreciate well, it. Looks like we've got a question, uh, Council Member Stevens. Yeah, this might actually be more of a question for, um, for uh, Councilman Cheatham. I'm just wondering, uh, with the socialization and activities for 55 and over, how do you see this dovetailing with, augmenting, interacting, whatever, with uh, what is um, what our senior center is talking about? I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that that would be any reason to, you know, preclude this project. I'm just curious what your thoughts would be. Well. It if this project is primarily veteran oriented, I don't think I, I don't think there'll be that much overlap, Chris. Okay. Uh, we're trying to do some of the same things, but I think they're different populations. Thank you, uh, Claudia. Um, sir, sir, what 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 time frame are you looking at for having completing this project and having it up and running? Uh, TJ, do you want to take that one? I mean, we got quite a bit of work uh, ahead of us. Obviously, we want to do this right. Um, uh, sometime in uh, uh, probably third quarter, fourth quarter of uh, 2021. Uh, we've got a, quite a bit of work to do. We want to make sure we're, you know, get proper support from the community and, and your, uh, you know, Pocatello City. Um, so, uh, but we've, we've got a, you know, that hotel will look, that'll look very different when we're done with it. So, um, you know, we, we've got a lot of steps. We've got uh, already, we have uh, architects, engineers doing work. We've done the uh, demographics. We know uh, what the uh, referral market is for the uh, veterans. So we're, we're doing all our homework. We don't like to make mistakes. So uh, we're looking at uh, third to fourth quarter of 2021 to answer your question. Thank you. And I think it's great that Good. that this is happening in our community we're, we're i gotta tell you we're very excited i mean everybody hates this pandemic but uh it's it's really we're doing two things we're helping out the vets and we're uh saving a lot of uh a uh, lot of uh, aspects of the hospitality industry as well as hospitals that we're involved in i'm sorry you know ahead. every 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 situation is an opportunity so i'm glad you're taking advantage of of this situation to make an opportunity that benefits other people. Thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Rick. Yes. Dan. Go ahead, Rick. Is, the Clarion, is the Clarion closed at this point? I mean, have you already acquired it? Is, is Are we at that stage yet? Uh, TJ, maybe you want to address that? Is it uh, your legal right on the ground? So, yeah, um, my understanding is that transaction is not closed yet and the Clarion is still functioning and that it will continue to function until they begin the transition. And, and to add to that, a corollary to that is we are spending we are spending real dollars right now to do the proper due diligence, make sure we get the proper zoning and again, the support of the community. What we don't want to happen uh, have happen is, uh, you know, a big gap as far as uh, 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 jobs and, and uh, have this uh, sit vacant for any period of time. So we want a clean transition here. Okay, thank you. Uh, then I would ask uh, the staff, who on staff has worked with this? Looks like uh, Matt. This, yep, Miss Matthew, can you all hear me? We can. Awesome. Uh, so since Mr. Budge and Mr. McNulty um, provide a, a detailed description of the proposal, uh, my presentation will be fairly brief, uh, just touch on some of the higher levels as far as the planning end of it. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Matthew Lewis, Senior Planner with the City. As noted in the applicant's rep uh, Applicants represented the presentation, Lockwood Development Partners, LLC, in partnership with HSB Hotels, LLC, the property owner, 
is proposing a contract rezoning of the Clarion End property address as 1399 Bench Road from commercial general to residential commercial professional to allow the property to be rede redeveloped into a multi-use complex consisting of age-restricted 55 years old or greater housing, a veteran's uh, education and adult daycare. The proposed zone change does not require a concurrent amendment to the comprehensive plan land use map as the application is for contract reason. Under the cur current commercial general zoning designation, residential uses are permitted outright in upper stories provided at their ground floor commercial uses also provided on the property. The proposal as submitted includes elements which do not neatly fall within the use defined by Pocatel Municipal Code, including uh, multifamily dwelling units, households living, group living unsupervised, and group living, super, group living supervised. For this reason, the rezoning by contract is being requested in addition to the fact that commercial uses will not be provided on the ground level. Again, the proposed use is exclusive to housing veterans 55 uh, and older, which distinguishes it from a typical multi-family apartment use. Um, just like to note that all property owners within a 300 foot radius of the land to be rezoned have been provided notice of the public hearing in order that they may provide comment on the proposed contract zoning. Notice was also published in the Idaho State Journal and two signs were posted on the subject property. At the time of the completion of this staff presentation, no phone calls were received and no written public comments submitted. Based on the, the information provided by the applicant and their representative, as well as city staff commission uh, the commission recommends by a four to one vote approval of the application from Lockwood Development Partners LLC in partnership with HSB Hotels LLC to rezone by contract the property located at 1399 Bench Road to be zoned residential commercial professional, finding that the application does meet the standards for approval under Chapter 17.02.180 of municipal of Pocatello Municipal Code with the conditions attached as part of the commission's findings. This concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Matt? Matt, you haven't had any other uh, correspondence that we don't know about? I have not, Mayor. Uh, Madam Clerk, any for in the clerk's office? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Then thank uh, you. we would look for any testimony supporting the application. Any testimony uncommitted to the application. Any to testimony opposed to the application. Seeing none, uh, I don't know if you have anything to rebut uh, TJ uh, and or Dan, and I know TJ as an attorney, you want to rebut everything. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, unless there's something that we just have to say, then I'm going to go ahead and I declare the public hearing closed. Council, this item before you. How do you wish to proceed? Uh, we've got uh, Roger and then uh, Claudia. Councilman Bray and then Ortega. I can't, we can't hear you, Councilman Bray. Mayor, I move that we approve this contract reason with the conditions listed. Second. Thank you. We have I move that we approve this contract reason with the conditions Perfect. listed. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Ortega. Connie, could you please call the roll? Yes. Yes. Adamson? 
Yes. Tina? Yes. Tina? Yes. Larry? Yes. Yes. Okay, just a minute, Council. Slow network connection. Okay, we're going to move on. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Congratulations. Uh, yep, thank, thank you. you. We'll go to uh, move to agenda item eight, short plat switcher, switcher subdivision. Council may wish to approve a short plot application submitted by Swisher Properties LLC, represented by Rockman Engineering and Surveying, to subdivide approximately 0.7 acres into two residential lots. The property is located at 1154 Swisher Road. Staff finds the proposal comp uh, compliant with all ap applicable standards and conditions. Councilwoman Lyric, you're unmuted. Were you going to make a motion or did you just? Uh, I can. <laughs> um, so I move that we approve the short plat for the Swisher 2 subdivision. Um, and that's all. Second. With condition? With conditions, yes. Councilwoman Second. And uh, Councilwoman Stevens, you're good. Second. Okay. So we have a motion by Lurk and a second by Stevens. Connie, could you please call the roll? Lurk? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Lurk? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Ray? Yes. Tina? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to agenda item nine, grant application, Rural Cares Act, one-time technology grant application transit. Council may wish to ratify the submittal of a Rural Cares Act, one-time technology grant application. If awarded, council may wish to authorize the mayor to sign related contract awards and authorize the public transit director to execute the grants and any necessary amendments uh, execution of the project is uh, subject to award confirmation, legal review, and budget amendments. Grant is 100% federal and does not require a local match. Council Member Cheatham. Mr. Mayor, I would move for approval of agenda item number nine, the grant application for the Rural Cares Act one-time technology grant application for the transit department and authorize your signature on all contract awards and authorize the public transit director to execute the grants and any necessary amendments. Second. Second. So I have a motion by Tatum and a second by Stevens. Connie, could you please call the roll? Tatum? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Eric? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 10, an ordinance establishing standards for face coverings for individuals when they are in public, including penalties for violation. Commencement date, date and, proclaiming, and proclaiming that it is effective upon posting in five public places of the city. Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Lurick. Uh, I move the ordinance agenda item number 10 be read only by title and placed on final passage for publication and that only the ordinance summary sheet be submitted for publication. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion by Lurick and a second by Bray. Uh, Connie, could you please call the roll? Lurk? Yes. Gray? Yes. 
Yeah. No. No. This is just the reading. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jared, would you please read the ordinance? Yes, Mayor. An ordinance of the City of Pocatello, a municipal corporation of Idaho, establishing standards for face coverings for individuals when they are in public places, including penalties for violations, and providing that this ordinance shall be in full force and effect upon posting in at least five public places of the city. The provisions here at 12 o'clock a.m. on November 21st, 2020. Mm -hmm. I declare that to be the final reading of the ordinance. Shall the ordinance pass? Mr. No. Mayor? Adamson. No. Oh, hold on. Yes. Mr. Council Mayor. Ortega? Yes, thank you. Um, Martin Luther King said, there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right. The COVID pandemic has taxed us all this year and we're all weary of it. It's decimated businesses and hurt families. It's strained our healthcare professionals, not just physically, but emotionally as well. Personally, my family has been directly affected by this pandemic. Relatives and friends with the illness, the death of a close family friend directly from the COVID. My own sister is a physician who has lost a number of otherwise young and healthy patients to this virus. A couple of months ago, we had a room full of healthcare experts, both providers and researchers, recommend a mask ordinance. These people warn that during the winter months and the onset of flu season, we would see huge upticks in cases resulting in overtaxing our hospitals, and we are now exactly where they said we would be. I have received hundreds of emails, both in favor of and opposed to a mask ordinance. Most very reasonable, regardless of position. I have read them all. Some, however, need to be addressed. Many have expressed concerns that a mask mandate will be violating their constitutional rights. I have read the constitution many times in my life and again today and cannot find any clause or amendment addressing issues of public health. In that situation, the 10th amendment then applies. The powers not delegated to the United States by the constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. There is nothing about wearing a mask temporarily that impedes anyone's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Many are opposed to the mask ordinance because masks do not prevent COVID. And they are correct in their assertion, masks do not prevent COVID. What we do know, however, is that masks reduce the transmission of communicable diseases of which COVID is one. Masks are one simple measure that can be taken along with limiting gatherings, hand washing and social distancing which all result in a reduction of the rate of transmission of this communicable disease. Taiwan is a perfect example of how masks and quarantining and contact tracing have essentially eradicated the virus there. They have had one case since April. Some have sent emails threatening not to vote for my reelection or to recall me if I vote in favor of the ordinance. To those, all I can say is number one, I have no political ambitions. Number two, it is your recall, it is your right to recall any elected official. But I will not be threatened or intimidated by anyone or any group to vote for anything I don't believe is the right thing for this city as a whole. Lastly, I would just like to say that this city has some serious problems. We have a runaway budget, a murky budget process, no strategic plan, no assessment of efficiency, ridiculous property taxes, lack of economic development, increased poverty and homelessness in our population, which goes hand in hand with increased crime, drug trafficking and drug use. I don't get any emails regarding any of these issues, but I've received hundreds of emails regarding the use, the issue of wearing a mask temporarily. I would urge all those who took the time to email regarding the mask issue to stay interested and remain involved in all the other issues I have mentioned 
And then we can all be a part and work together for the needed changes in our community. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Okay, would you, Connie, would you call the roll? No. Gray? Yes. No. Yes. Lurk? Yes. 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 So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I go to agenda item 11, I want to just state, make one statement. We have people that are out here, people in the lobby and people outside that are have been protesting. I want to compliment them all. Peaceful and they've been doing it the correct way. And I appreciate the citizenry of Pocatello and, and the way that they've been able to handle and and uphold themselves here. So I want to just publicly thank them for, for their attendance and, and things there. With that, I'm going to run, move to agenda item 11, items from the, uh, the audience. This time has been set aside to hear items from the audience, not listed on the agenda. Items which appear somewhere else on the agenda will not be heard at this time. The council is not allowed to take a, any official action at this meeting on matters brought forward under the agenda item. Items may be referred to in a, the appropriate staff or scheduled on a subsequent agenda. You must sign in at the start of the meeting in order to be recognized. Uh, and we, nobody has signed up to speak on anything outside of the thing. And so with that, thank you very much. Thank you to the public that has uh, been willing to come out. And for everybody uh, that has spent time sending emails, they have uh, truly been uh, read. We take it seriously, and we appreciate your work and your attendance here. And, Council, thank you for everything that you do as well. With that, we are adjourned.